Hello and welcome to The Grid. Uh, I'm David McDonald, Technical Director at eSmart Networks, and this is your insight into The Grid and how it is helping us get to net zero. This week, I'm in the host chair, uh, making me the oldest host of The Grid podcast to date, just to clarify in case there was any questions from the previous episode. Um, now, before we go on to today's episode and what we're covering, I would like to ask any of our Spotify listeners to check if the Grid podcast has made it into their 2022 20, wrapped top podcast summary. So I checked mine out um, earlier this week and the Grid appeared at number three for me in my podcast summary. So uh, do come on and comment and let us know if you've managed to beat that, if we are managed to get number two or number one in your uh, wrapped podcasts. So previously uh, here on The Grid, we have covered a number of technical elements in our podcasts. We've done network capacity explained, voltage levels explained, fault levels, and flexible connections. However, this podcast is the most technical one yet. Um, this week, in episode 11, we're going to explore harmonics and their relevance to EV chargers. So what we're hoping to cover is what is harmonics, what sort of equipment can cause harmonic distortion, how the introduction of renewable generation and EV, charger has, EV chargers has increased harmonics um, on the network, industry standards, and what solutions can be applied. Now, if you know me well enough, you'll know that I can answer any of those questions and why I am in the host seat today. I will be asking those questions. So this week we've been joined by our very own David Pariachi, who is our Connections Design Manager here at eSmart Networks. Uh, David, you're very welcome. Um, David's a chartered engineer with over 14 years in the industry, uh, having spent time working in power system consultancy and across various DNOs. Uh, as I say, David, you're very welcome. Anything else you want to add uh, to my intro there? Thank you very much, David, for that introduction. And um, welcome to all our listeners um, on Spotify, YouTube, wherever you're listening into. So um, I spent a bit of time in power system consultancy. Um, my last role was at uh, TNEI, which are specialist um, consultants. Um, I've spent some time across various DNOs, uh, Northern Power Grid, spent a few years there, um, ENW and uh, Scottish Power. So got some um, good uh, industry um, and DNO experience. Brilliant. You're very welcome. And I would say uh, this will not be the last uh, podcast you're making an appearance on, David. So um, good to have you on board. So look, let's, um, let's get started into this. It can be a complicated subject. Um, but harmonics, what, um, what exactly are harmonics and how do they affect our energy system? Can you sort of give us a high level talk through that, please? Yes. So if you picture this, we have an AC sinusoidal waveform. So it's periodic and it's flowing almost like the waves in the sea going up and down. Now imagine a um, repetitive distortion on this beautiful sinusoidal waveform. Otherwise, imagine just some wiggly lines on it, um, on the top, um, in a repetitive way. Um, so kind of distorting this waveform. And those, um, that distortion in the waveform or the wiggly lines is what's known as um, harmonics. So harmonics are um, continuously repetitive and occur as a combination of integer multiples of a base frequency to recreate a complex periodic waveform. So this was first defined by uh, Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier in the late 1700s and early 1800s. Um, and he developed what is known as the Fourier series. And he also defined the fast Fourier transform, um, which is a mathematical technique used to calculate harmonics. Yeah, no, great, David. I mean, you're, I'm having flashbacks to A-level maths and, um, yeah, <laughs> and to sitting in lectures in Belfast uh, uh, a long time ago now. Uh, so, yeah, lots of historic, and certainly the theory's been there for a long time, and you're talking about the waves uh, and the sort of wiggly waves, I understand that. And maybe it's a bit like our own Brian Murhead when he's out in the surfboard. I know he likes to do a bit of surfing now and again. I definitely would think he would add a distortion or two to a wave. So yeah, those wiggly lines on top of on top of the, the sinusoidal wave is the bit that is causing that distortion. And I've actually heard it mentioned recently, um, mentioned as uh, harmonic pollution as opposed to distortion. Any thoughts on that? 
harmonic pollution is a nice way to refer to it because it is actually pollution on the network because the effects of harmonic is can be damaging to electrical equipment. Um, it can also be it can also cause uh, an increase in the energy consumption. So definitely, it's a nice term to use harmonic pollution. Yeah, it kind of makes more sense in my head as a as a problem more than something that is distorting. Uh, just the, the way of in, in itself. So in terms of the effects on the system, you said it can cause damage. Talk us through that. What does that look like? So in the uh, electricity grid um, supply uh, system, we have a 50 hertz um, AC um, voltage waveform that, that's generated by gas-fired or hydro-powered um, sa- substations um, uh, from generation sites. Um, and um, however... Connected to the electricity network is uh, non-linear nodes, uh, loads, or and power equipment such as um, EV chargers, and th- this type of equipment can cause this distortion um, that can can be seen um, on on the the AC um, sinusoidal waveform, and this distortion is what constitutes the harmonics um, that can be measured on on the electricity network. Okay, and we'll touch a bit more on how that can be corrected and, and what that means for you as a, a connectee or as a, a charge point operator or even as uh, someone who's who's just looking to get charged in the network um, and wondering why we can't even get more chargers uh, connected. So um, you've mentioned the EV charging piece, but there's there's quite a lot of equipment that can cause harmonic distortion. I mean, can you can you talk us through what type of equipment they are and and maybe how long they've been around for? Yes. So transformer magnetization that causes harmonics, um, generator slot harmonics and rotor harmonics, that's part of your passive equipment. Um, in your active equipment, we've touched on EV chargers, um, everyday fluorescent lighting, um, single phase power supply units, um, even power supply units to your computers, um, very variable speed motor drives, HVDC, which is a huge cause of harmonics and that um, can concur a lot of cost to in the design and installation of harmonic filters, um, wind turbines, statcoms, SVCs, and you also get short-term harmonic sources su- such as transformer inrush and motor starting, and also um, cable charging current. So now, um, key point to note is that harmonics um, occur as integers of the fundamental waveform and. Harmonics such as the fifth and the seventh harmonics are the ones that really you can pick up on the trans, uh, transmission um, system that gets transmitted through the transformers all the way upstream back to the generators. And these harmonics can cause heating of transformer windings, cause the switch gear and, and the generator. Yeah, so like loads of different things playing in there. So you have uh, some equipment that's been on networks for years, like fluorescent lighting, um, and then also like uh, motor starts. I mean, that's been sort of fundamental from the industrial age or whatever, where you're starting to get those those motor starting um, that causes harmonics and short term harmonics, and and the network operator's been dealing with that for years. But as you say, there's a few more joining that party now. So you have the EV charging piece, um, you have wind turbines, particularly sort of in that net zero space. So a lot of things competing there. Just a, like uh, an interesting one in that fluorescent lighting. So um, and we'll talk about uh, maybe headroom later for harmonics, but. But the, the move to LED lighting, does that, is that going to help us a little bit in that space? Well, uh, it, the, the power consumption is quite low, so the harmonics, um, the harmonic distortion from, from LED lightning might, might be low. Um, yeah. from, from no, it's just something when I come through, I was like, oh yeah, that, I've seen a lot of change outs now. So let's see in terms of, so the harmonic um, distortion, how is that really relevant to EV charging, um, as I say? The network has been modernized. You've heard that here in the GRID podcast on many occasions uh, around connection of, of low carbon technologies, of renewable energy, and of EV charging. So how is this harmonic distortion really relevant to, to EV charging? Yes, yeah, so the presence of harmonics in the electricity distribution grid has always been there. And however, due to the, the increasing um, uptake and penetration of EVs and renewable energies, um, there has been an increase in the harmonic dis- distortion observed on, on the network. Um, so EVs apparently have um, power electronics equipment that convert the AC to DC to power the batteries. And this conversion causes um, harmonic distortion, which can be injected into the electricity grid um, if it is not monitored and controlled. If 
you have the scenario where many um, EV chargers are charging at the same time, such as a large um, electrical uh, bus depot, then the harmonic distortion in, the, in that particular area will be much higher than, than normal. And um, the increase in fast and high power charges will lead to a considerable increase in harmonic distortion observed on the local grid. Okay, and in terms of like, how does that damage the grid? Like, what does that look like uh, in terms of, um, you know, equipment on the grid and how that can affect it? Yeah, this will give give rise to, to greater losses um, observed on the grid, more energy consumption um, required to to power the grid. Um, yeah, and and damage to to equipment. Yeah, well, it's sort of like age assets as well, or are, are, are quicker the aging process of assets like transformers. Yes. Okay, perfect. So we want to try and manage that. Um, and obviously, as I say, harmonics has been about for a long time. But how has the industry kind of uh, implemented standards in terms of harmonic limits? What's the right limit for, for a network? And, and has that changed over time? Yeah, so there are key industry standards to observe. Um, the international standard 61,000, that um, describes the compatibility limits. Um, there are... Um, engineering recommendations G55 also provides a set of design limits for harmonic voltage levels that you know ensure compliance to the 61,000. Um, and uh, the IEEE 519 also covers um, the recommended practice and requirements for harmonic control in the electrical power in- uh, systems. Now, an int- interesting point to note is that um, IEC standard 61851 is an international standard for um, the EV charging systems. Um, and parts of this standard are still under development to accommodate, you know, this this increase um, the increasing challenges we are seeing with EV charging. Yeah, so as a move in space, I'm assuming there was a, a G5 bar four, and a, I'm assuming maybe some before that as well. And uh, so, in terms of the standards and the engineering recommendations, they're continuing to grow as we're continuing to learn in this space. Yeah, so just on that piece then around. Headroom, uh, and it's something I've started to really think about more recently. We've talked about it in capacity terms. That's something that's very common in the network. Uh, you know, terms in terms of uh, there's one megawatt available, there's two megawatts available in the current network. We we look at that. Uh, we look at volt drop. We mentioned that in previous episodes. We looked at uh, fault levels and a bit of headroom and around fault level. Do we really think we're starting to get to a position where we might see a harmonic headroom? Yeah, there could very much be a, a harmonic headroom because um, um, yeah, there's there's distortion limits that are um, defined in in the standards and and engineering recommendations that we need to um, keep within. So yes, definitely. Yeah, I know it'll be interesting to see how we continue to develop in this space, and we'll maybe come back to another podcast in the future at some stage. Um, in terms of like charging solution providers, what can they do to like? reduce this harmonic distortion or this harmonic pollution? Can they, can they do anything locally? Can they do anything within their chargers? How do they kind of work through that? Yes, so charging solution providers, they can buy good quality chargers. Uh, some of the good quality chargers are fitted with um, filters, EMI filters. Um, they have good power factor correction inbuilt with them that help reduce um, harmonic distortion. Um, some of the other things that um, installers can do is installing uh, power quality monitoring devices that um, and harmonic analyzers that uh, um, monitor the harmonics and, and help to identify any power quality issues that might be developing, and then you, and then be able to address that those sort of issues over time. Yeah, so you can respectively then go back once you get a view of what harmonics are there and through the power quality meter you can address particular ones or look at certain filters to to, to reduce certain harmonics, those nasty fives and sevens that we were talking about. Yes, yes, the use of um, harmonic filters is is a very good example um, and it's um, quite uh, widely observed in the HVDC world, so definitely something something to look out for. Brilliant. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us. I know this is a very techy subject. I'm delighted that I've been asking the questions and not answering them. Um, it's been a really useful summary. Hopefully our listeners have found it useful around harmonics and why you know the DNOs and, uh, and others are getting so 
um, interested in the harmonics uh, and its relevance, particularly to EV charging and, and more so to the low carbon technologies. And, and even on that, just you know, for our listeners that who receive maybe DNO offers on a regular basis, what are we starting to see in those offers around harmonics? Is there standard statements? What what are they expecting people to do? What do you need to prove then at the end of that? Yeah, so the, the DNOs do include within their offers um, standard statements around um, requiring to be within the engineering recommendations G55 or G54 um, limits for harmonics. So that's, um, that's definitely defined within their uh, connection offers. Okay, and um, you can then get people to carry out those studies or whatever to, to ensure that we're compliant. Um, you might do a few yourself if needed. Yeah, so we've uh, within eSmarts we've developed a type two harmonic assessment spreadsheet, and we've um, been collect collecting a database of um, harmonics for EV charges. So we've got um, quite a good database um, and all the that's been collecting over time. And we actually can compare um, harmonics from from different charges, the the ones that we've observed. Um, and and what what you do notice is that the more high power the charges, the more high higher the harmonics. Um, and then um, what's also observed is is that um, the more better quality the charge is, maybe the more expensive it is, um, and the more well designed is, you'll see a slight reduction in um, harmonic distortion on on that. And that um, when when purchasing a EV charger, you can look at the data sheet, and that will give you a total harmonic um, distortion percentage. So those are just things to look out for. Yeah, there could be a, a bit of a total cost of ownership piece there where maybe the, the cheaper one looks good up front, but then you have to invest in harmonic filters and, and a lot of studies and power quality analysis, whereas potentially um, maybe the more expensive one, not all the time, but on certain occasions of that better power quality piece that maybe doesn't require this further work as well. So there, there is certainly a few commercial considerations to have a, a think about there. Is that, would that be fair to say? Oh yes, yeah. There's um, uh, some commercial considerations to 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 determine where going big, going large, and, and the cost of, of overall purchasing a better solution will that help you in the long run? You know, so definitely something to think about. Brilliant. Well, a few teasers left there for you, our listeners, to have a consideration of when you uh, come to purchasing maybe EV chargers um, and getting your DNO offer. So once again, thanks very much, David. Great to have you along. In terms of our listeners, thank you for listening again. Please do continue to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You can ask questions on YouTube in the comments. You can also leave us uh, comments through the grid on uh, eSmart Networks page where, uh, on LinkedIn. So you can drop us an email as well uh, at the grid at eSmartNetworks.co.uk. If you have particular topics you want discussed, I know one of our listeners talked about power factor corrections, so hopefully they've enjoyed some of today's harmonic piece. And um, if I'm not speaking until you again before Christmas, have a lovely Christmas and a happy new year. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good Christmas. Mm-hmm.